let us come let us adore you kneel down before you kneel down before you in your presence Lord worship worship
that you are always, always welcome here at the Emmanuel Crowgate Baptist Church. Amen. Now I get to put the glasses on. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. I went to the doctor last week and they gave me new prescriptions that I'm adjusting. But I have a few announcements that I can see. <laughs> uh, on the third Sunday in, of this month is Thanksgiving Celebration Sunday. We will be uh, having a Thanksgiving celebration here during morning worship service. And we ask that you all please come in to give thanks and to praise God for all that he has done. That is the third Sunday of November. Uh, this coming Tuesday, we will have Bible study on Zoom. We are asking our members and friends to please join in on Zoom so that you may participate as we continue our study of the book, in the book of Proverbs. The Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church, the SALT Ministry, uh, and we'll be having an annual women's conference, and that's on this coming Saturday, November the 11th, from 10 till 2. The doors will open at 8.30 a.m. for a continental breakfast, and then the uh, conference will begin from, uh, oh no, doors open at 8.30 a.m. The Continental Breakfast is from 9 to 10. The conference theme is She Rises with Faith. Special guest speakers will be the Reverend Annette Bullock from the Grace Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Riverside, California, and Interim Pastor Clarissa White of the Mount Trinity Missionary Baptist Church in San Francisco. Uh, registration is online. Uh, the fee includes a t-shirt, breakfast, and lunch. I will post this on the bulletin board for those of you who would like more information. I uh, would like to say happy birthday to all those celebrating birthdays during the month of November. Uh, Michael Jefferson's birthday will be on the 13th, and Brother John Henley is on the 25th. We're asking that you continue to pray for all those who are on our sick and prayer list, including Pastor Dom, that you might feel better uh, for Nurse Mimi back there. <laughs> we are praying for you that, you keep, that your patient might be obedient and follow the Lord. He put his hand down, so we don't have that many. <laughs> but Pastor Don, we wish you uh, a speedy recovery. Uh, we ask that you pray for uh, the daughter, the youngest daughter of Brother Justin Love. Uh, Ellison Love broke her leg on Friday night, I believe it was. And she is in a cast from her, all the way down, from her thigh to her foot. And we asked she broke her tib tibula and fibula, right? Tibia. tibia and fibula. Yeah, both of them are broken. And she's in a cast, but we ask you that you pray for her, that she too might have a speedy recovery. Uh, Sister Hampton is with us this morning. We thank God for her. We ask that you continue to pray for each other, that God might continue to heal, that God might continue to bless. To Deacon Rather, we thank God for you for being here. We ask that you continue to pray for uh, the Reed family, uh, Sister Virginia Chapman, who lost her, her godmother's mother last week. And we're praying for you and for uh, Rashid, who was away at college. And we're praying for each other that God might continue to heal, that God might continue to touch, that God might continue to work miracles in our lives. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Let us all say amen. 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 We thank God that he enabled us, those of us who are here, to be here. Lord. You're not here because you're so good. Amen. You're amen. here because amen. God was gracious. Yes, and we just thank God for you. Not only will we pray for those that were listed, we also want to pray for, I think we heard Brother Bob Wade had a son yeah. that went Thank in you. surgery. Yes, kidney yeah. transplant, I believe. Right, yeah. right. So we need to keep him yeah. in prayer as well. And pray for all of us. Just pray for God's people. We need prayer. We need yeah. prayer. So we just ask you to just continue to stay in in contact close to God because we need Him. We can't make it without Him. We thank God for it. Uh, you can tell that God is using our pastor here. He's, he's kind of batched up a little bit, but He's here. He's here smiling and just praising God. Thank you for, thank him for, for that. 
Now we're going to ask that we will give something back to God. Uh, let us ask the officers to come that we may be able to uh, lift the offering this morning. Oh, 
say amen. amen. We thank God that we have a pastor that is preaching the word of God. Amen. I mean, he is preaching God's word. Amen. Uh, I imagine if I was in his position, I would have stayed home today. Amen. I would have had surgery and all of that. I would be at home. Uh, but thank God we got a pastor who knows the Lord. And I'm happy to say that he's my son. Praise the Lord. We thank God for it. It's kind of batched up a little bit, but he still wants to preach the word of God. Amen. Thank God for his wife who stands by him. We thank God for him. Now, following the choir, as they sang the Eight of Beasts at the selection, or whatever they sang, we're going to ask them for, some, for a song, and then the voice that you hear will be that of Pastor Dominic Hampton. Let's give him some praise, huh?
buy treasures in the most unlikely places. Yeah, yeah. You can search the whole world. We can we can have a desire to find treasure, and we can dedicate our whole life trying to find treasure. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, we end up finding treasures in the most unlikely places. Yeah. Yeah. There's a story of a couple who went flea market shopping. And they went to the flea market and they, they got they, they passed by this old ugly painting. And they had a friend and they liked to do uh, tricks and, and they liked to prank with each other. And they said, let's buy this painting for our friend. Give her this old ugly painting. <laughs> they went and got this painting that cost them five dollars. <laughs> They went and visited their friend and gave the painting to their friend. And they laughed about the painting and said, yeah, that was a good one. Mm -hmm. You got me on that one. This is an ugly painting. Mm -hmm. And so they set the painting out on the front porch. And one day, a, a, an artist came by and looked at the painting and rang the doorbell. <laughs> the artist said, I just I want to ask about this painting you have on the porch. He said, oh, this is this old painting. You can have it. The artist said, no, I can't just take this painting uh, because this is an original painting. This painting is worth more than $20 million. You can find treasure in the most unlikely places. There is always the pursuit of treasure. Is always the pursuit of power. The pursuit of power these days equals the ambition to live with pride. In other words, society teaches that in order to obtain power, one must be arrogant. One must be full of themselves. One must be a narcissist. We believe that in order to obtain power in our lives, we must be strong and without weakness or flaw. All right. All right. Power must equal strength. Uh -huh. Power must equal superiority. Uh -huh. Power, as we think, must equal no signs of weakness. Uh -huh. But if we look in the mirror, most of us are not those things. All right. All right. Most of us, we aren't without weakness. Yeah. We aren't without flaws or blemishes. As a matter of fact, we can sometimes testify to the fact that we are filled with brokenness. We go through many things in life that make us feel broken. We go through difficulties at our job and we feel inadequate or we feel broken. We go through times in our lives where we lose loved ones. And our hearts remain to feel broken. Yeah, yeah. We go through troubles in our relationships and it seems like there's nothing we can do to solve the issues. And we live our lives feeling broken. Yeah. And so many times we question if God can use us because we are weak and broken. But the problem is we may not be weak enough we may not even be broken enough. The problem is, we too many times, we fake the funk and we want to portray that we are big and bad. We want those around us to think that we are all of that and then some. Especially us believers, we want to walk around with our suits and our dresses, with our Bibles under our arms and with our noses up in the air ready to look down upon everybody else. But throughout script history, it seemed that the Lord uses the most broken of people to do the most powerful things. He used a drunken Noah to restore the earth. He used a murderer in Moses to deliver his people from slavery. He used a manipulator in David to lead his nation. He used a cusser in Peter, a 
tax collector in Matthew, yeah. hotheads in Andrew and James. He used a doubter in Thomas, and he used a terrorist in Paul to spread his word to the whole world. The Lord sees to it that true power is given in brokenness. For it is in brokenness in which God allows circumstances to control our lives to the very point that we must totally depend on Him. And from both experience and observation, it seems the greater God's plan is for a person, the greater the brokenness He requires. And this is what the writer Paul here is trying to convey to us. That even though I've been broken, even though I've gone through the worst, even though I'm living with this thorn that's in my flesh, I still have this treasure that's within me. And I wonder if I have any witnesses in the house who can testify that even though things may not be all peaches and cream, I know that I have this treasure inside of me. Is there anybody here who's thankful that you have to go through some weak moments? That you're thankful that the Lord brings you through your broken experiences and you can declare what comes my way it doesn't matter because I have this treasure that's inside of me. Our text this morning tells us three things about this treasure. First of all, it tells us that we've been given a treasure. The treasure that has been given to us is Jesus the Christ, who is power. Paul tells us about this treasure as he testified about his encounter on the Damascus Road. He tells us that this is this was the light that stopped him in his tracks. This was the light that knocked him off his horse. It was Christ who was the light that placed a change in his heart. And in verses 4 and verse 6 in our text, he speaks of this light that shines in the midst of darkness. And I know I'm not the only one who can testify that the light lives within me. Somebody can declare it was the light that lifted me up. It was the light that showed my footsteps. It was the light that allowed me to navigate through the darkness of time. Then you have this treasure 
inside of you. All right. All right. This treasure should be something that we cherish. Yes, sir. Yes. This treasure should be something that we prioritize. Yes. This treasure that we have is something that we ought to share to anybody and everyone who comes in contact with us. It is this treasure that should be passed down from generation to generation. It's this treasure that puts joy in your life. It's this treasure that puts running in your feet. It's this treasure that puts wrapping in your hands. It's this treasure that's inside of you that puts joy in your heart. I wonder if there's anybody here who's not ashamed to testify. I have this treasure inside of me. And because of this treasure, I have this joy. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Because this treasure has been given to me by Jesus and Jesus alone. We've been given a treasure. Also, this treasure is in clay vessels. We have this treasure. We have this power in earthly vessels. Normally, such treasure is usually placed in vessels of value to protect and to preserve the value of the treasure. Amen. But God chose vessels made out of clay Amen. to place his treasure in. Amen. We know that the outward appearance is constantly fading away. All right. But the inside yes, is being renewed every single day. Some people look good. Some people talk good. Some people carry themselves with a swag and with a lot of charisma. But we have to be careful not to put more emphasis on the container more than we do on the treasure. I myself, I know many singers who can sing the rooftop off of a church, but they have no treasure. I know many preachers who can hoop and they can curl, have so much charisma to stand people on their feet, but they have no treasure. If there's no treasure on the inside, their efforts will be dead. But if you have a treasure inside of you, you may be able to carry just a little bit of a note. And the Lord can use you to change lives around you. You can have just a little bit of education. You can even have a stutter in your speech. But if you have a treasure inside of you, the Lord can use you to speak His word into somebody's life so that their life will be changed for the better. And I'm so glad that I can thank God that no matter what my outside appearance may look like, it doesn't matter how gimpy I may be, I thank God that He gives me this treasure inside of my life. We have to be careful of what we desire. We have to choose, are we going to desire the treasure or are we going to desire the container? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we have this desire of the treasure a little bit too much because we walk around and we boast about how we love the Lord. Right, right. We boast about how much scripture we know. Yeah. We boast about the fact that Jesus is my friend and yeah. He walks with me and talks with me. He, he shows me all of the things I need to do in my life. But then we say all that and we have the, the nerves to say we don't need the church. Not knowing it's the church that is needed to cultivate 
of faith. This the church that's needed to give us the food that we need to survive throughout the week. It's the church that's needed to let us know that no matter what we go through, God is right there with us. So yes, we need the container. But we also need the treasure. Sometimes people desire too much of the container. We want the title. Uh -huh. We want the position. Uh -huh. We want the charisma. Uh -huh. We love the fact that we have that same seat on a pew that we can say that we sit, we've been sitting there for 30, 40 years. Uh -huh. And we come to church with no Jesus in our yeah, heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We must be careful that we don't desire the container more than we can desire the church. Because truth be told, we can't do nothing in this life without Jesus in it. Truth be told, we can't, we can't be successful in nothing unless we have this treasure in our lives. And we thank the Lord that he sometimes gives us broken treasure, broken containers, but he always places in us the power of his treasure. Bible says that we have this treasure that's in earthly vessels. But also it tells us that power is revealed in brokenness. Sometimes, well, most of the time when I'm sitting before I preach, some of y'all maybe look at me and say, Pastor, well, they're asleep. Have his eyes closed. But I have my eyes closed because I'm deep in prayer. Right. Yeah. I'm deep in prayer because I realize that I am broken. Yeah. Yeah. I realize I'm just an earthly vessel. Yeah. Yeah. I realize I'm just a pot of clay that can easily be shattered. But I have in me this treasure. Yeah. And my prayer before I stand to preach is the Lord just use me. I cannot stand and preach unless you give me this treasure. I can't stand to preach until you give me the power to speak. If I depend on my own self, I would sputter and I would titter tatter and I would do everything else up here but say what the Word of God says. But if I depend on the power of God, He's able to give me what I speak. Also, in order for the power of God to be revealed, we must go through some stuff. In order for God to use us in our lives, we must be able to be broken and go through some weakness. When I asked, right before I asked my wife to marry me, I knew I had to go get a yeah, I'm talking about you. I needed to go get a ring. I asked my father, I said, Dad, I need you to help me go pick out a ring. So we went down to the Air Force Base, looked at the jewelry, and they, they brought out some rings for us to look at. When we looked at the jewelry, most of the jewelry looked dull. They looked like they were, you know, Kind of fake diamonds. But I saw one, I said, let me see that one. And the person, they put it on a, a brown background. And she, they said, oh, this is a good quality diamond. And I looked at it and said, I don't know. Then she put it on a black background. Then I could see the diamond shine. And I could see the quality and the value of the diamond. I told my dad, yeah, that, that, that's a good one right there. We can get that one. And I'm trying to tell you that sometimes we can't shine properly. Right. Unless we are placed on a black, black background. There has to be some brokenness in our lives in order for God to be able to shine his power through our lives. I'm trying to 
trying to figure out if I'm the only saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, anointed child of God who had to go through some dark moments in order to be used by the Lord. Somebody else declare the reason you shine is because of the troubles you've gone through. In order for the power of the Lord to shine in your life, you have to go through some troubles. Somebody can testify it wasn't until I got the sickness that the Lord shined in my life. Somebody can testify it wasn't because until I got locked up until the Lord shined in my life. Somebody can testify it was only because of the addiction I had to go through in order for the Lord to shine in my life. Somebody has a testimony to declare I had to go through the dark moments in order for the Lord to shine through my life. In order for the power of the Lord to shine in our lives. Yes. We must be troubled on every side. Yes, we must be perplexed. Yes, we must be persecuted. Yes, we must be cast down. Yes, but in the midst of our brokenness, yes, the Lord keeps us. Yes, because even though we are troubled on every side, yes, we are not distressed. Yes, even though we are perplexed, yes, we are not in despair. Even though we are persecuted, we are not forsaken. Even though we are cast down, we are not destroyed. And once we receive this treasure, its power becomes too much for us to keep to ourselves. Jesus told a parable about a man who found a treasure. The man wandered into an open field stumbled upon a treasure which was hidden under the earth. He covered the treasure back up, sold all that he had so that he could purchase the open field. He wasn't interested in the field, but he was interested in the treasure. Similar thing happened many years ago in the Middle East. Some travelers stumbled across a treasure that was dug in in the corner of a valley. When they investigated its context, they discovered that there were hundreds of pieces of gold that commemorated Alexander the Great. Well, well. This treasure was estimated to be worth well over $30 million. But unlike the man in the parable, these travelers were so excited about their findings that they could not keep it to themselves. If they could just keep quiet about the treasure they discovered, their children and their children's children and their children's children's children would be well off. But because instead the treasure was confiscated by the government. Oh, because they were too excited about the treasure they possessed. And I wonder if there's anybody in this place who have discovered that they have this treasure inside of them. Yeah. And its power is too much to keep it to yourselves. Jeremiah said like this, I wasn't going to say anything. But it was like fire shut up in my bones. It was too powerful for me to keep it to myself. And I wonder what treasure do you have inside of you that is too powerful to keep to yourself? Somebody can testify, I have this treasure inside of me. And I have to tell somebody about it. I have this power inside of me. And I have X in my pants, trying not to tell somebody. But it's too powerful for me to keep it to myself. Somebody can declare, I have Jesus in my life. And because I have Jesus in my life, he's done so many things for me. And because he's done so much for me, I've got to tell it all. I've got to tell the world what he's done just for me. Somebody can declare he healed my body. I've got to tell the world. He mended my confused mind. So I've got to tell the world. He released 
release me from the shackles. I've got to tell the world. He put me in a house that I don't have credit for. I've got to tell the world. I've got a career I don't have the education for. I've got to tell the world. I live in places. I'm among some people. Place your treasure in. I 
I strive to survive in my current predicament. Amen. 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 The Lord is good. Oh. He's truly worthy to be praised. This is a time that we give glory unto the Lord uh, for the things that he has done and specifically for uh, the sacrifice that he's made in our lives. Sacrificing his life just for us. Allowing his body to be broken uh, just so we can have the power to have everlasting life. Gospel of Luke chapter 22 says, And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him, and he said unto them, said unto them, With desire I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more their love until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. He took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood which is shared for you. Let us come to the longest table in the world. At the cross, at the cross, where I
Let us drink together. Thank you. 